Well, hello there, lads and lasses. Welcome back to the garage once again. Very excitingly, me and the FZ1 have got a track day coming up. The Michelin Road 5 tyres are just about shot, so they're going to be getting replaced in a couple of days when the Metzler Roadtec 01 SEs arrive. In order to do that, I've got to take the wheels out, so I thought, while I'm at it, why not stick a new set of brake pads in? Bloody hell, was that a palava? Right, don't try this at home, kids. It's probably not the uh, sturdiest of paddock standing that I've done there. I really should have got a proper paddock stand with the points to go into the bottoms of the forks here, but it's under pressure. And this one at the back there I got from the flea market at lowest for 17 euros. So that's already about a quarter of the price of paying somebody else to take the wheels out. So anyway, we can now get on taking this front wheel out. I've already removed the pinch bolt here because I stuck these bolts in here to give me some something to push against getting this up on the stand. So now that that's undone, we can undo this massive Allen bolt here. Looks like waving a stick in the other hole. I'm gonna need a bigger tool. Closer, but she still can't quite feel me. Right, now we're talking. Probably really ought to have loosened this off before I put on the stand, so. So there you go, kids, top tip. Maybe crack your nuts off before you get your thing up. This is a 19 millimeter Allen key, by the way. So in case you're making a shopping list for your own front wheel removing endeavors. So that's the axle bolt loose, which means when I pull that out, the wheel's gonna wanna drop to the floor. Hopefully, anyway. Otherwise, something's gone horribly wrong. Right, there we go. There's the axle bolt. Grease is looking relatively clean. It's nice to see. And then one of the spacers. We're definitely gonna have to clean that now because it's covered in grit. And now, obviously, it doesn't want to go in it. Mm. There's the other spacer, also covered in grit and slime. Obviously, the wheel doesn't want to go any further because the calipers are stopping it. And there's no way this wheel is coming out without the calipers getting out of the way. They have quite literally put the brakes on our progress. That's a 12. So there's bolt number one out of the way. And it has thread lock on the bolt, so we're going to need to remember to put thread lock on the bolt again, and we put it back in. Same for that one. There we go. So now the same on this side. It's a bit shadowy around here, so you probably can't see anything. But it's exactly the same, so I'll meet you back on the other side. And then we're both calipers freed from the right. Wheel the front wheel out. See what I did there. And give this a proper good clean up and get the new tyre fitted. And we can move on with the next step of our operation. Well, to be honest, these pads look like they've got a bit of life left in them. And my Fred Dibner tool tells me they have in fact exactly 3.24 millimeters. Ah, sod it. Loads of life in them. Forget it. Can't be asked. Oh, of course I am only kidding. The new ones have considerably more, so it's worth changing them now that I'm in there. I've gone for TRW organic brake pads because I like to know that no pesticides have been used in the cultivation of my braking facilities. And these ones, new out of the packet, rocking just over 5.7 millimeters. And considering these brake pads have actually been on the bike since I got it two years ago, and God only knows how long they were on there before that, these should now last approximately six years. Anyway, let's get these ones out. We need to do some needly nose pliers and pull out these little circlips. That will then allow us Push the pin out, hand behind, because there's a chance the pads might just jump for freedom. There we go. Pull the pin out, and then everything falls out the front. And there's the old pads. Quite interested to see what brand they actually are. See Ferodo. Good afternoon, Mr. Baggins. I found some of them on the interwebs. They are also organic. I'm glad to hear that, because I really like the way that the bike feels with the braking at the moment. Sometimes the sintered brake pads and be a bit grabby and a bit snatchy. Obviously, although you get better braking performance and better heat management, as you can see, in two years of riding, I haven't even worn through used pads. So I'm obviously not a very heavy braker. So with that done, we turn to the calipers themselves. And because the new pads are now so much thicker than the old pads, they're not gonna just fit inside there. Well, actually they do, but there's no brake disc in between, so that's not gonna work very well. So we need to push the cylinders 
back into the calipers, but obviously before we do that, I want to clean all of this gunk out of there. So I have a rag with my solvent of choice. Today I should be cleaning my brakes with Metaxa Greek Brandy. Wow, oh, it comes out lovely and shiny, isn't it? The last time I changed the brake pads on a bike, which was on my Versus, there is a video of that. I made a number of mistakes. One of them was not to do this. If you just push your pistons back into the calipers without cleaning the crap off, all of that crap's gonna get shoved into your seals and potentially shorten their life, which we don't want. And obviously crap inside of your calipers, inside of your piston workings, is also not very good for the longevity of the caliper as a whole. What I've actually done just there is to very gently squeeze the brakes a tiny little bit just so that I can go out to where they're already shiny on the cylinders to make sure that we're still not pushing any dirt back in there. Obviously if you're going to do that, but just be very, very careful that your cylinders don't pop out completely because that would be disastrous. And obviously keep an eye on the other side while you're doing it because both sides will move at the same time. And if you wanted to be super anal, you could take the whole thing apart, clean everything, replace your seals, go crazy with it. So there we go, there's the pistons about as clean as they're going to get. And I thought of a way to make sure you don't go too far if you want to push the cylinders out to get them right clean. And that's to put your old pads, because they're going to be nice and warm, stuff them in there. And then you can pull the brake lever to your heart's content and you can't go too far. So anyway, now that they're clean, we need to push these cylinders back into the calipers. The second mistake I made in my last video, forgive me, I was young and naive all those three years ago. What I did was I jammed a screwdriver in there, forced the pistons back. It's not a great idea to do this because due to how pressure works, using a small, sharp, hardened tool on these pistons could end up damaging them, warping them, scoring them. We don't want to do anything that's going to cause any danger of that. So instead, what I'm going to do, once again, is put my worn brake pads back in there and then use the screwdriver between them to evenly and squarely push those pistons back in to the bodies of the caliper. So now the screwdriver is coming nowhere near into contact with the pistons. And there we go, there's our pistons pushed right back in, nice and clean and shiny, ready for us to put the new pads in. Now just give the retainer clip a nice clean so it's looking nice and shiny when it's poking out at us. There we go, look at that, looks like new, isn't it? Leave these with brake components on a 14 year old bike. Anyway, we can now put our new brake pads into the calipers, but first we want to take some copper grease and dab a bunch on the back of the pads there. Being careful obviously not to get any on the front of the pads because if you get grease or oil onto the braking surface that would be quite disastrous because you'd have hugely reduced braking efficiency. You can also get little pads that you put on the back of the brake pads that actually do the the job of the copper grease to stop the squeaking but I've also heard lots of people saying that they affect the feel of the braking so I haven't yet bothered to try those out. Maybe next time, because the feel of the braking, I'll be honest, is another reason why I've gone for organic pads, because they're just a bit smoother, a bit softer than sintered pads, which can be quite aggressive, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so our pads are greased, put the braking surfaces together, slide them bolt holes to the rear of the bike, trying obviously not to scrape all of that grease off onto the cylinders on the way past. So that is in and we put our little retainy clip thingy in there the arrow points downwards according to the other side because i clearly didn't check it before i took the brakes apart there we go i would have thought the arrow would have at least denoted up or direction of rotation but nope completely the opposite in every case so that pokes down there with the central tab they're going between the brake pads and you stick the pin back in doesn't matter which direction you go in because it's the same in both directions it goes through the first brake pad, over the top of the retainer clip, through the second brake pad, and then through the hole there. Also trying to keep these little holes facing upwards because then that's going to make it easier when we poke our little clips back into those holes to stop the pin from escaping. That's the first one. There's the second one. So now that's that side done. And obviously the other side is exactly the same, so I'm going to save you the tedium of that. So I'm going to flash forwards until the wheel has got the new tyre on, the other side has got the new brake pads in and we can stick the wheel back on. So here we are a couple of days later. It's magic this video editing nonsense, isn't it? And here's the wheel with a nice shiny Metzler Roadtech 01 SE put on it. Watch this space to see how I get on with these tyres. Very excited to see how they perform next to the Michelin Road 5s that I've just replaced them with. So I present up the wheel, making sure to get the rotation the right way, which for these tyres this looks a bit confusing because the chevrons are going backwards. But don't forget that these are rolling, not propelling. And important as well not to forget the spacers because once you've got the axle in and then you find out you've got spacers on the garage floor, it's time for some swear words. So hopefully I should be able to just 
line that up, just enough of the paddocks down there to take the weight of that. Freshly, lightly greased axle bolt. There you go, that is in. Just nip it lightly, we'll talk that properly in a second. And for the caliper, it's pretty much the reverse of taking it out. Just need to hold the pads apart. This is naturally very difficult to see. Slip the disc inside and stick in the bolt hole in the caliper on. And although I did say that there was thread lock on these, so I was going to put thread lock on them when I put them back in, I've checked in the Yamaha service manual for this bike, and it makes no mention of thread lock. So I'm going to lean towards going with the manufacturer here, leave the thread lock out. Talk to me next week, and I've barreled into a hairpin with no calipers because they're flapping around like a couple of spaniel's ears in the wind. Same on the other side, there's the pinch bolt on the bottom of the fork leg. And before we go any further, just make sure that the wheel rotates all right. Make sure we haven't cocked anything up, got anything twisted, got anything sideways. First of all, tighten up the main axle to 72 Newton meters. And then the pinch bolt to six, 24, 23 newton meters. And then finally, the caliper bolts to 40 newton meters. That is the new brake pads fitted. So all we need to do to finish off is just to pump the brakes a little bit to get the adjustment down. So we're getting immediate contact with the pads on the disc. There we go. And obviously, as you can see, if you look closer, the disc has got loads of scratches and grooves just from general wear and tear. General wear and tear. Uh, and of course, the new brake pads are completely smooth. So it's gonna take a little while for the brake pads to bed to this very unique shape of my particular discs. My disc fingerprint, if you will. Um, so for the first few miles, I'm just gonna have to take it a little bit easy till the pads break in. And that is that. New brake pads fitted to my Yamaha FZ1M. Thank you so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, tell me what you did or didn't like about it in the comments below. And uh, obviously, if you're not already, get yourself subscribed to this channel and click the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos in the future, both in the garage like this or riding this bike out in the big wide world. And watch out particularly for the track day videos that are gonna be coming from the track day that I'm heading off towards tomorrow, actually. Really looking forward to that. Just hoping that the crack that I found in my header pipes doesn't turn into much of a problem while I'm doing my sound testing. But yeah, watch out for those videos to find out. And until then, keep your shiny, keep them in good condition, and I will see you out there tomorrow.